this is now our fifth and, I believe, yes, final session on verses 8 through 10 of Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you, it is the gift of God, not from works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And where we want to end is pondering, what does this mean? We are his workmanship. We have been created, brought into being in a new and profound way as we're made alive, according to verse 5. In Christ Jesus, and the design and intent and purpose and outcome and fruit of this new creation and workmanship is good works, and then this, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Father, I ask for light now, not only to see what this means, but why it's here. What effect on us is it supposed to have as we walk in good works? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm asking this question. Since the aim with this four is to add another reason for why we can't boast, the first reason is given here, before we were saved, everything we needed to be saved was a gift of God. And now he adds that everything we need to do after we are saved is a creation of God, a work of God, a preparation of God. Why not just stop here? Why not say, we're not going to boast. We can't boast. There's no way we can boast even in what we do after we're saved, because we are his workmanship. He created us to do what we do. We're created. We're created in Christ, and we're created for good works. End of argument. And Paul doesn't stop there. He adds, as if to strip us of every possibility of resorting to the thought that we are somehow decisive or the originators of our good works. Like some people might say, oh, okay, it's God saved me, and he didn't do it from works, but now I do the good works now that I have a new nature in Christ. I'm the one who originates these. And Paul adds, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So strange. So strange. Just ponder it for a moment. We are being created, or we have been brought into being, and we are new people in Christ, a new creation in Christ. The effect of that new creation is a poem, poema in Greek. Each individual human convert, with all of its genetic makeup and all of its shaping by culture, is created anew. And, and this creation isn't new legs and arms and noses and eyes. It's not new internal organs. What is it? What, what's the workmanship? What's the poem? It's a new, what, way of thinking, a new way of feeling, a new way of acting. These good works here are the external manifestation of this workmanship. So creation happens by union with Christ. The effect of God's internal bringing into being a new disposition, a new kind of preferring, a new kind of willing, a new kind of desiring, and, and thus a new kind of thinking up to a point, creates this workmanship which shows itself in these good works. So this prepared beforehand 
perhaps then means, I mean, that's an odd word to use. You, we would accept maybe plan, planned beforehand, prepared beforehand, so that it's as though God, before the creation happened at conversion, God had a blueprint for what this creative act was going to produce as this new structure, this new poem, this new workmanship producing these works. So the let's just say it's something like a design, a plan, uh, long before creation. And I say that because back in chapter 1, verse 4, It says, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, be blameless before him in love. So this choosing us, this election before the foundation of the world is precisely with the design of making us holy. So this prepared beforehand is very likely not minutes beforehand, but in eternity beforehand, before the creation of the world, God prepared a blueprint, sort of, a plan, and he was going to create it. The effect of it would be his workmanship. The outcome of that workmanship would be good works, so they are prepared that we should walk in them. Now, I think, therefore, that this is added, right there, that is added to make sure that we realize when we walk, when we walk, Okay, so you get up from your table after looking at this and you go do a good thing, a right thing, something that's loving and kind. You do it. When you do that, this sentence is designed to say to you, God planned that, God created that, God worked that, and that is God's fruit and God gets the glory. Isn't that the point? I mean, what's, what otherwise would be the point of this to say God prepared them before him that we should walk in them so that as we are walking in them, we have the profound sense, this was prepared for me. This was created in me. This is not ultimately of me. This is of God. So to confirm that God actually does things that way, I'm going to zip you through one, two, three, four, five, maybe six texts real quick. And you, you go slow. You can stop it anytime you want and think. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for God is the one who is at work in you to will and to do his good pleasure. So he's at work in you willing, and he's at work in you doing his good pleasure. Yes, your good works are his good works. Here it is in Hebrews thirteen twenty one. May he equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So what pleases him is our good works. He's working them in us. Here's Ezekiel 36, 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk, cause you to walk in my statutes. It's a new covenant promise which Jesus bought with his blood, according to Luke 22, or Luke 20. I can't remember. You look it up. This is the new covenant in my blood. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. That's good deeds. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Here's John 3, 20 and 21. Everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God, by God. Prepared for by God, carried out in God. And those who are walking in the light, love the light, love to give God credit for the good works that they do. Here's First Chronicles twenty nine seventeen. I have seen your people who are present here, 
offering freely and joyously to you, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes in the thoughts and thoughts in the hearts of your people and direct their hearts toward you. So grant that they would always be doing such generous things, Lord. You work that in them. And finally, we'll look at this. We always pray for you. Second Thessalonians 1. We always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good. God fulfills our intentions for good deeds. And every work of faith, you can call them resolves for good, you can call them works of faith. Our job is to trust God and act. His job is to be decisive in bringing the work to pass. He does it by His power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in Him according to the grace of our God, which is what fulfilled every good resolve. So I come back here and I say, when we were saved, by grace you have been saved. What brought us to salvation was not from us. It was the gift of God. It wasn't from our own doing, lest anybody boast. And after we were saved, we are his workmanship now. And that workmanship means we were created by Christ in, by God in union with Christ. And that creation produced a unique poem. Every individual is unique. And the uniqueness of that poem as God created us is demonstrated in a pattern of good works that flow from our life according to our gifts and opportunities. And all of that was planned, prepared by God in eternity so that when we walk in the good works that reflect who we are as God's workmanship, as a result of the creation by God in Christ, we will not boast, but give God glory. Not only that he saved us, but that he enables and carries through all of our good works. Praise be his grace.